contrary to what was maybe expected, saving some cash by mating an engine and transmission that were never supposed to be together has actually proven to be a huge success. Now though, cramming them into a car they were never meant to be in, well that's a whole nother story. So let's get on with it. This little GT6 has been through a lot in the last 50 years. It's had at least two previous restorations, for lack of a better term, numerous owners, and we're convinced must have lived at the bottom of a lake at some point. It's taken the two of us no less than four years to repair all that mess, and after it was done, we sold the entire drivetrain to make room for a completely reimagined replacement. As you do. Corvette and Crown Victoria suspension now adorn our completely one-off chassis, and last time we got the budget LS4 and T5 sorted with a custom flywheel and starter solution. The goal is a poor man's F-Type R, and if you're just discovering the project, this video will get you mostly up to date. Mounting the engine and transmission in the car involves double and triple checking that we've actually got room for future activities, and then there's a whole slew of driveline angle measurements. The good news is we already took care of all that in episode 17. So to learn more about U-joint phasing, angles, and how not to die because of them, check out the link here. Otherwise, with engine mounts already taken care of, the only thing we're missing is one more mount for the transmission, which just needs to go from here to here. And how hard can that be? If any of this tickles your fancy so far, subscribe, hit the bell, and tell some friends. If you've seen any of our previous adventures, you're probably expecting me, at this point, to introduce some completely random part from another car to solve the problem of mounting the transmission. But you'd be wrong. This is the factory mount our T5 was designed for, and for once, should simply bolt in place. In case you ever just think we complicate things for no reason, allow me to introduce Exhibit A. Here's the problem. This is the contour of our body shell, with provisions for mounting to the original chassis here and here. These are the new frame rails running under the body shell. This is a cross section of the transmission, and its built-in mounting boss, which you may notice, is on a bit of an awkward angle. And lastly, these are a couple of two and a half inch exhaust pipes. Ideally, they'd be located further apart, but the lack of space for the rest of the system means they'll have to be closer together like this. So the task then, if you so choose to accept it, is to join here, 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 and here, while avoiding here and here. That factory Mustang mount is shaped like this, which we hoped we might just be able to modify, but seeing it now, it's pretty obvious that's not going to happen. It's just too tall to fit above the exhaust. So, perhaps predictably, we're going to have to make one. Most of the time, the simplest solution is the best, so let's start with the basics. A sturdy beam like this will take care of mounting the body and chassis, but will make life difficult elsewhere. The exhaust can't run under the frame due to ground clearance, and annoyingly, even pass-throughs still won't raise it enough for our liking. So, we're going to have to feed it over the beam with a slight recess instead. And that should be fun. The transmission still clear so far, so that's good, and a bracket that extends outwards and mounts to the top of the beam with some isolator blocks should lock it down nicely. I'm quite sure there's another better way around this, and if you thought of one, please don't tell me. In the background, we talked through a ton of different ideas, but with the design finally figured out, let's get to it. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not that we don't enjoy taking a body shell on and off, and on and off, over and over, but it's not a stretch to say that it's a bit of a fuss in such a small space, and doubly so now that all the drivetrain is mocked in place. So for that, and a few other reasons, this time we've elected to take the slightly sketchier approach of just lifting it up with some wood. I choose to see nothing wrong with this. There is just enough room to get where we need now, and we're pretty much going to replace that temporary brace with a permanent solution that looks like this. It's marked up for cutting already, but before we reach for the grinder, something we fought with in the past is distortion from cutting a section 
out of the side of box tubing. To try to prevent that, this time, we've clamped in a support to keep things from pulling inwards. The grinder and hacksaw have taken care of the cuts nicely, and thankfully it doesn't appear that anything has moved just yet. So, a new plate can get tacked into the base, and fillers for the sides will come next. And there you go. Warpage. Bummer! The problem is accentuated by the welds pulling on the same side the material was removed from. But as much as it's unfortunate, it's also not going to affect anything other than aesthetics. And as Dad likes to tell me, get mo. Good enough to move on. Now remember from our plan that the transmission mount will bolt to this beam? Well, we're going to need some way of passing bolts through it then, aren't we? Previously, we drilled and sleeved the main frame rails for mounting the body, which is exactly what we need to do here as well, except for the fact that we don't really want all these bolt heads acting as the lowest points of the car. So we need another solution. These bits, once assembled, should allow the bolts to be recessed into the beam, protecting them from any kind of scrapage. Welded up, you can probably see how they're going to work. Currently, these bolts are a snug fit, but some Allen head replacements should solve that easily. The main beam needs to get drilled out next, and it looks like the sleeves are going to work great. So let's get them welded in for good. And ground back, naturally. With that, we're largely finished with this first piece. So we've popped it in place and bent up a thin strip of steel to get the idea for how the second half of the transmission mount will work. These are some chunky polyurethane bushings that may look familiar to you if you have any previous experience with Triumphs, as they were originally designed to mount the stock differential. Now we're not exactly using the original diff, so they were going spare and should accomplish this task perfectly. Using a single piece of bent steel here wasn't going to work, so instead we'll make this out of five pieces welded together. It's inadvisable to weld around urethane, so to get this done, we're going to need some temporary spacers. These bits of tubing should do the trick, though we're going to need to square up the ends as otherwise they'll tilt the plates like so. Now without a lathe this will be difficult, so we've done the next best thing and chucked up the pieces in the drill press. This allows us to grind the tube back and finish it off with a file to get them as true as we possibly can. Sketchy? Yes. Effective? Yes. In the end, there's only two thousandths of an inch difference between the parts, so I'll call that a win. With everything assembled now, we can do a quick verification with the bushings to see if it is indeed square, which it seems to be, and that's confirmed with a set of calipers. Now clamped in place on the chassis, you can clearly see what's going on. The plate on the transmission just needs to mate up with those smaller ones, and something like this should accomplish that nicely. Both sides, of course. I'll tell you, it was a little more than awkward to hold the parts in place and weld them at the same time. Let alone get a camera in there as well. But regardless, it's together now and incorporates all those subtle angles that were nearly impossible to measure before. While it's bolted in place in an effort to keep things from moving, it got fully welded up, and I can't even complain about those beads. The outside corners got smoothed off in an effort to make it look a bit more like a stamped part, and we could call it done here. Except, we want to add some little gussets in here to add some more strength. So basically, bracing from bolt to bolt down the sides. We still need to keep the inside as open as possible for the exhaust pipes that are going to come through here. We've got these two in. I've got this one made here. That's going to live right in there. Just a uh, rinse and repeat. We've got all four gussets tacked in on the top here. They're looking pretty good. They still need to get fully welded, but we're actually going to flip it around, secure it back down, and then do these ones first. Then we can weld them all up and grind them at the same time. So we just got all these little guys tacked in there, all eight of them. It looks a little bit funny because of course nothing's actually square, of course. The transmission's on an angle and it's also on another angle and these are flat, so 
it's kind of odd, but what we were trying to do is keep this line and this line parallel so that uh, it sort of looks like there's just basically a plate on either side, but then of course we set them in so it's all nice and flush on the sides and it doesn't protrude. It really looks kind of cool. It's it's more like it's just a plate rather than all the individual gussets that we had to add in, but it gets the design down. And I, I, I think that looks very nice and strong. This is all 3 16 These little bits are eight. I don't know, I like it. So we need to get some bolts that are just a little bit longer, but there they are sunk up inside at the bottom. Big block of urethane on the bottom, another little block on the top, washer bolt. That gives this complete isolation, so it can sort of rock a little bit, it can twist a little bit. If the engine needs to move, it'll follow suit. There's also enough slop in the mounting that if it needs to just shift forward or backward or whatever, just a little bit to make everything line up perfectly, it's uh, not the end of the world as well. That looks like it should do the job quite nicely. And it certainly spits up the back of the transmission at least. We just need to quickly clean up the frame rails before we can do any welding. So I was out with a flap disc again in one of the more awkward environments I've had to work in. But with that done, we can pop the beam in place one last time, clamp it up, and lock it in permanently. Only the top beads have been run so far, as access to the rest will be a lot easier when the body comes off later. But as it sits, this ain't going anywhere. It's looking like this should fit the bill perfectly. So with that, I'm very happy to say we can cross one more item off the list. I know a transmission mount's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is a huge step for us, as it means finally our engine and transmission have a new forever home. And that's been no small task. There's a ton of details we need to circle back to, so stay tuned for next time as things get taken up a level. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> if you enjoy what we're up to, please help us out by subscribing and sharing the series with some friends. A huge thank you to our amazing patrons and donators for their continued support. And if you'd like to help contribute, please check out the links below. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Fanatic Builds, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.